In terms of uh, the aging workforce, though, one thing I, I, I did want to touch on, I mean, the fact is that people are living longer, their parents are living longer, and that creates an entirely different uh, set of circumstances. And one I think, uh, if I can step out of the normal bargaining box, I think that we in labor have to, um, we have to ignore uh, the Glenn Becks and the bankers of this world who want to just take everything away. But I think there is a serious discussion we ought to have about changing the way our careers develop. I think that um, in the industrial age, our jobs were jobs, and everything was more clear in terms of, you know, hours of work with the things you negotiated, wages and, and retirement security, whatever that might have been in different industries. But I think we're at a point that with people living longer, um, some of the things we bargained for historically, which was, you know, early retirement, um, getting people, uh, you know, one of the goals in a lot of our locations was getting people, for example, a 20 or 25 year pension. And um, from the worker's perspective, I'm not so sure that's something that's as important as trying to develop their skills during their careers so that as they age, and in our industry, it's impossible um, to drive a bus for 40 years. I mean, well, I shouldn't say impossible. There are probably three or four people that have done it. But, but what happens is that, you know, when you hit the road day after day, your body breaks down and you get to a point um, where your option in transit, for example, is either, you know, retire or die, you know, or live in agony. Uh, and I think we, as unions, have to develop more, um, more friendly policies um, to deal with what happens with, with our own members as they age and, you know, they get into their 50s and 60s and, and find alternative work. But I think, I think a key to that is, is bringing them training and education during their work lives, finding ways to do that. And that requires, uh, it requires a lot of bargaining, but I think it also requires some soul searching on our part in terms of what our goals ought to be, understanding that our members are living a lot longer than they used to, and the burden of providing for people in retirement when they're going to retire and live for 30 or 40 years is, is a real burden, and we have to confront it. In the intercity bus industry, <clears throat> the Greyhound members of our union um, in 1975 were the highest paid bus drivers in America. Um, in Canada, where deregulation has not occurred, they remain very highly paid. But in the United States, their salaries have been cut by two-thirds over the course of the last 30 years. Half of the people who work driving buses and fixing them at Greyhound have no health care insurance. Um, they live lives like nomads. They go to work. Um, and this may be something common in the airline industry. I, I'm not that familiar with it. But they go to work uh, not knowing what city they will sleep in. And when they end up in a different city, they often do not know what day they will return home. I mean, if you want to talk about a job that ha absolutely has, uh, that, that strips you of your ability to have a family life, that, that's one of them. The average size of an American bus company is three buses. Intercity bus, now let me tell you what that means. That has very serious consequences for the American people. Um, every time I wake up and hear a story about a bus that slid off a highway, rolled off a cliff or whatever, I know with, with absolute certainty that there's about a 98% chance that one of two things happened. Either the me mechanically that bus failed or the driver fell asleep at the wheel. And both of those are directly tied to the fact that there are no more rules of the road, there is no more regulation, so that a bus driver in America, in order to earn a living, has to work 100 hours a week. And I'm not kidding you. That's how it is. An intercity bus driver, right? The average size of the bus company is three buses, therefore it is impossible to adequately capitalize a bus company so that you can run it safely. Because when you own three buses and you're trying to figure out how to pay the bills, you have those buses running 24-7. And you have the driver <coughs> driving around with, with his or her eyes closed. And that's a reality in America today as a consequence of our government's action and the fact that nobody wants to talk about it. Well, you know, I just think that, uh, you know, good wages and good pensions and good health care um, and all the things that the labor movement has fought for over the years, like weekends and vacations and holidays, are family-friendly things. I think, on the other hand, we just haven't gotten far enough. And I think we've now hit a roadblock where they're trying to take away the foundations of, of our working lives. Uh, so, you know, the real question we have to answer is what kind of society do we want to live in and how much are we willing to fight uh, for those goals?